Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless take the 10 worst presidents in the history of our country you can add them up put them together and they haven't done the damage that joe biden's done to this country what he's done to this country is unthinkable we all know who donald trump is the question we have to answer is who are we that's what's at stake who are we in the year ahead, as you talk to your family and friends, cast your ballots, the power is in your hands. Ten days from now, the people of this state are going to cast the most important vote of your entire lives. I believe that, too, very much. I used to say that 2016, and I believed it then, and now I believe this is even much more important. I had won the election, and he was a loser. <laughs> Our country's going to hell. You don't mind me using that horrible word, don't you? I use that word because our country's really in trouble. It's in trouble like it's never been before, in my opinion. We have a man who's grossly incompetent dealing about de dealing with nuclear war. I'm trying to rewrite the facts of January 6th, Trump is trying to steal history the same way he tried to steal the election. Biden's record is an unbroken streak of weakness, incompetence, corruption, and failure. I'll say what Donald Trump won't. Political violence is never, ever acceptable in the United States political system. Never, never, never. It has no place in a democracy. None. We become an embarrassment as a country. The U.S. Surgeon General calls it the defining public health crisis of our time. Mental health. One in five adults experience mental illness every year. Depression rates are at an all-time high. A third of adults report being diagnosed with depression sometime during their lifetimes, a figure that is rising. Nearly 50,000 Americans died by suicide last year, more than any year on record. In 2021, more than 12 million American adults thought about suicide. 1.7 million attempted it. The youth mental health crisis is overwhelming emergency rooms. Nearly 60% of high school girls reported persistent feelings of sadness or hopelessness. And for our nation's veterans, the crisis line is fielding a record number of cries for help. This is the highest number of homeless people recorded since the federal government started this particular survey in 2007. Primarily, it's driven by people who became homeless for the first time. Just over 653,000 people were experiencing homelessness on a single night in 2023. That is up 12% from 2022. This is the first time in a decade that family homelessness has increased in the U.S. There are 186,000 people in families with children experiencing homelessness. That is an increase of 16%. Americans are struggling with the rising cost of everyday items, falling behind in some cases on expenses like car loans and credit cards. From the gas pump to the grocery aisle, inflation continues to take a big bite out of family budgets. In July, personal expenditures jumped another 3.3% from a year ago. We're paying more for pharmaceuticals, recreation, groceries, and clothing. And more Americans are choosing to charge it, though with credit card interest rates at a record 20.6%, many can't pay the bills. Credit card debt in America has reached a new high. A report released by the Federal Reserve yesterday shows credit card debt has now passed the $1 trillion mark. Meantime, the U.S. government's debt has topped $34 trillion for the first time ever. The figure is the total amount of outstanding borrowing by the U.S. federal government accumulated over the nation's history. The U.S. has seen, of course, that rapid recent rise in interest rates, which made it much more expensive to tackle the debt. It's estimated the government spends $2 billion a day on debt interest payments alone. Well, tonight, the CDC is sounding the alarm about a record number of deaths in America from drug overdoses. Overdose deaths in Maine continue to climb after setting a new record last year. 2021 was the deadliest year for overdoses in the U.S. Today, in a statement, President Biden called it an epidemic 
epidemic of loss. One American is dying from a drug overdose every five minutes. It is a public health crisis that's preventable. Our children are dying and, and no one's helping us. If you go back to 1980, 6,000 people were dying of overdose. In 2015, 52,000 people dying of overdose. 2021 preliminary numbers suggest 108,000 people are dying. There's over double the overdose rates of suicides, of breast cancer, of prostate cancer, of gun deaths and accidents. This is 9-11 happening every 10 days, and we're not doing something about it. Today is the 150th day of 2023. So far this year, there have been 260 three mass shootings reported in the United States. 327 victims have been killed in those incidents. Both those figures are the highest ever recorded this early in a year. I talk about reaching a state of lawlessness, not just here in Chicago, I'm talking nationally uh, because of the political landscape in this country. And unfortunately, this is becoming the new normal. The more outrageous the incident, you know, the, the six month old getting shot while sleeping in a crib in somebody's apartment, um, it's the new normal. Across the country, grief, despair, no anger. According to the Gun Violence Archive, in the first few weeks of 2023, at least 73 people have been killed in 40 mass shootings across the country, compared to 27 at this point last year. That's any shooting with at least four people shot. There have been more mass shootings than days in 2023. The outlet mall near Dallas. We start hearing, rock, rock, rock. The Atlanta Medical Office. All I see was police cars and SWAT and everybody's just pulling up, pulling up, pulling up, back to back, back to back. Neighbors shot in Cleveland, Texas. A Sweet 16 birthday party in Alabama. A Louisville bank. And an elementary school in Nashville. How are our children still dying and why are we failing them? According to the National Gun Violence Archive, there have been a total of 632 mass shootings this year. More than 1,500 children and teens have been killed in mass shootings in 2023. I've been studying this for 40 years and I've never seen a year like this. Jeremiah 18, 7 through 10. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. Beachgoers flee as a giant out of control oil tanker barrels ashore. Airliners fall out of the sky without warning. There's no one in that car! And hundreds of self-driving Teslas leave their dealerships on their own and cause havoc. It's the harrowing premise of the apocalyptic thriller Leave the World Behind, starring Julia Roberts. We're probably in the middle of a war zone. People we know are likely dead. America comes under a cyber attack that cripples everyday technology, leaving the nation helpless. I can barely do anything without my cell phone and my GPS. I am a useless man. Get this, Barack and Michelle Obama are the executive producers and helped write the chilling screenplay. No one is in control. No one is pulling the strings. Adding to the sense of anxiety, the identity of the enemy behind the devastating cyber attack in Leave the World Behind is never made clear. In the chaos, society breaks down overnight. Americans are soon at each other's throats. Manhattan becomes a war zone. But could it really happen? Shira Rubinoff is a cybersecurity expert. It's not if we're going to be attacked, it's really when. She says the Netflix movie is a warning that America's defenses against cyber attacks need to be hardened right away. This is not sci-fi. This is not something that could happen. This is something that will happen if we don't protect ourselves in an appropriate way. Well, mine's a little dark. I just feel a lot of concern that 2024 may be the year of a black swan event. This is a national security event with high impact that's very hard to predict. Um, there are a number of cons uh, concerns that I have that factor into that. Uh, not only this uh, sort of enduring heightened threat level, 
that we're facing, uh, the wars in Israel, also Ukraine. And we're so divided in this country in ways that we haven't seen before. And I think that just creates fertile ground for our adversaries like North Korea, China, and Iran. And that's what uh, concerns me most. Even people who do not believe in Jesus Christ and the end times know something is very wrong with our world. As of late, I have been hearing from so many people that 2024 will be the year when America goes over the edge. We are on the verge of World War III. Our financial system is teetering on the brink of disaster. Homelessness is rising at the fastest pace ever recorded. Drug and alcohol abuse are off the charts. Lawlessness runs unchecked. Food banks are facing unprecedented demand for their services. And it's not just happening in the United States. It's happening all over the world. I believe that 2024 will be the most chaotic election year in the entire history of our nation, with many saying the U.S. is heading for civil war. All of this is happening in the global framework of wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, famine and natural disasters, all of which are happening more frequently and more intensely. A perfect storm is raging all around us. Billions of people have become deeply concerned about what the immediate future will look like. The global agenda for a one world government, a one world financial system, and a one world religion are already set in place. All the world needs now is for the Antichrist to make his appearance onto the world stage. All of this can only point to one fact. The rapture, the seven year tribulation, and the Antichrist are just a heartbeat away from becoming reality. The Bible warns of the times we are living in, and God through his grace and mercy has showed us the end from the beginning. And now his watchmen are blowing the trumpet. Jesus is coming for the believer. No more pain or sorrow, but for the unbeliever, there will be misery and grief. Buckle up and hold on tight. By looking at world events, it seems probable 2024 will be the year when everything converges and with it the rapture, the seven year tribulation, and the revealing of the Antichrist. Luke 21:36. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Are you ready for what comes next? And we're so divided in this country in ways that we haven't seen before. And I think that just creates fertile ground for our adversaries like North Korea, China, and Iran. And that's what uh, concerns me most. Spiritual warfare is off the charts. Battle lines are being drawn and people are choosing sides. The United States is divided on just about every issue. Race, homosexuality, transgenderism, abortion, climate change, gun rights, and the list goes on. Jesus said that a kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, as we read in Matthew 12, 25. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. Jesus tells us he is the reason behind the division we are seeing today, as we read in Luke 12, 51 through 53. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. For from now on, five in one house will be divided, three against two, and two against three. Father will be divided against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Jesus then goes on to rebuke the multitudes for not knowing the time they were living in, as we read in Luke 12, 54 through 56. Then he also said to the multitudes, Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, A shower is coming, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, There will be hot weather, and there is. Hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? Jesus was rebuking the multitudes for not recognizing the times they were living in. Jesus, the promised Messiah, was standing right there before them, and they didn't even know it. If the multitudes of Jesus' day missed Jesus' first coming, 
How much more important is it for us today to discern the times we live in and make sure we don't miss the signs of his second coming? Jesus now goes on to tell a parable about his true followers and those who are not, as we read in Matthew 13, 24 through 30. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced the crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us to then go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus went on to explain the parable of the wheat and tares, as we read in Matthew 13, 36-43. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Those who genuinely follow Jesus are the wheat, and those who don't are the tares. I believe we are witnessing the wheat being separated from the tares. Are you a wheat or a tear? Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Well, tonight the U.S. is weighing military options against Iranian-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen after the militants launched one of the largest missile attacks on cargo ships in the Red Sea. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who's in the region, warns, quote, there will be consequences. CBS's Charlie Daggett reports from Israel near the Red Sea. Tonight, new images show the moment a British warship fired its air defense system at incoming attack drones in the Red Sea. Three U.S. destroyers took part in repelling a barrage of drones and missiles. In addition to F-18 fighter jets taking flight from the deck of the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower aircraft carrier. The U.S. Military Central Command describes a complex attack launched by Iranian-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen involving 18 drones, two cruise missiles, and one anti-ship ballistic missile. It is one of the largest of more than two dozen attacks on vital shipping lanes in the Red Sea since November 19th, when Houthi commandos brazenly boarded the Galaxy Leader cargo ship. And it comes just days after U.S. officials warned of consequences if Houthis kept launching assaults. Today, the White House doubled down on that threat. Make no mistake, at the time, U.S. vessels commercial and military, and dozens of other merchant vessels were transiting in the area of this attack. Had they been hit, innocent lives very well could have been lost. 
The Houthis claim the aim is to disrupt the flow of goods here in the Red Sea, and Israel's navy has stepped up its own patrols. But these attacks, Moranian-backed rebels, threaten to draw the United States directly into this conflict. And just today, there's been another report of a new drone attack on or near a U.S. base in Iraq. Luke 2125, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. At least 15 people were killed in deadly riots in Papua New Guinea, according to Australian media ABC on Thursday. Eyewitnesses filmed buildings ablaze in the capital city Port Moresby on Wednesday night. The unrest stemmed from police officers going on strike that morning. That's after they discovered a reduction in their pay packets, which the government blamed on an administrative error. The protest spun out of control and descended into lawlessness. Drone footage on Wednesday showed widespread looting in the capital. The country's Prime Minister James Marape criticized insubordination among the ranks. Ill-discipline in police force will not be tolerated. Ill-discipline in defense will not be tolerated. Uh, you can have one moment in the sunlight, uh, but these moments will not last forever. Smoke still billowed over burning buildings on Thursday. The U.S. Embassy in Port Moresby said police had returned to work, but tensions remained high. The Chinese embassy noted several Chinese nationals were injured and some Chinese-owned stores were looted. Australia said it's keeping a close eye on the situation, though Canberra says it hasn't received any requests for help from Papua New Guinea, which it regularly supports in policing and security. Tonight, Ecuador entering what the president calls an internal armed conflict, ordering the military to neutralize power gains who have been labeled as terrorist organizations by government officials. <laughs> nation plunging into mayhem this week as an armed conflict between gangs and the recently elected government led by President Daniel Novoa who secured his presidency on the promise to fight and reduce drug-related crime escalates. Today, Ecuadorian police lining up the 13 men they say attack a public television station in the port city of Guayaquil who are now facing terrorism charges. For yesterday's horrific event that was broadcasted live, Ecuadorians looked in shock as the event unfolded. For 30 minutes, the intruders are seen waving guns and explosives, forcing network staff to the floor, while noises like gunshots could be heard in the background. Although no one was killed in the television station attack, this morning the streets of Guayaquil empty as the city's fear lingers and the country remains under a state of emergency. That fear now spreading outside of Ecuador's borders, Peru declaring a state of emergency along its border with Ecuador so that the military can assist police. Our message to Americans that are in Ecuador is to please stay vigilant. White House spokesman John Kirby saying the U.S. is willing to work with Ecuador to curb violence, but ruled out military support. Ecuador has faced years of violence within its prison system, where clashes between gangs have left more than 400 people dead since 2021. On Monday, the nation's armed forces carrying out inmate control operations a day after the country's most wanted prisoner, a gang leader known as El Fito, went missing from his jail cell. Also this week, the nation experiencing several violent incidents of brutality, including explosions and more than 130 prison guards and staff being held hostage across at least five prisons. Los terroristas que están en estas cárceles. President Daniel Noboa saying the country will begin to deport foreign prisoners this week to reduce prison populations and spending. This morning, a second blast of brutal weather is barreling across the U.S., just as millions are cleaning up from another sprawling winter storm this week. Some rivers in the Northeast still rising, spilling over into neighborhoods after nearly five inches of rain battered parts of the already drenched region. We weren't going to be able to walk across the current, 
And so we at that point just kind of committed to staying in the building. Schools closed and neighborhoods evacuated near a partial dam breach in Connecticut Wednesday. Rescue crews pooling people from fast moving floodwaters. Winter weather from coast to coast. And in California, devastation at a popular ski resort near Lake Tahoe. After a massive avalanche nearly 10 feet deep and 450 feet long swept up four people and killed one, a 66 year old man. Oh, this is a very sad day. For my, for my team and, and uh, everyone here. Back east, powerful winds whipping along the New England coastline. Strong enough to push this empty southwest plain into a jet bridge in Maine. It's the same system that blanketed the Midwest in blinding snow and brought two dozen reported tornadoes to the south. Residents there now picking up what's left of leveled homes. Nationwide, there's no relief in sight for storm-weary communities, bracing for another blast of winter. We got flooded, I think, six weeks ago, right? We just, two days ago, we just finished all the work, and now we're going to have to go through the same thing again. Here in the Northeast, flood warnings are affecting millions of people this morning. Rivers are rising after heavy rain and strong winds, winds hit the region Tuesday night and Wednesday. As Meg Oliver reports, some people were forced to evacuate their homes. As rivers across the Northeast swelled, floodwaters drowned roads, submerged cars, and overwhelmed buildings. Homes in this New Hampshire beach town were surrounded as rescuers helped at least one family from their inundated home. It's real terrible. It's real bad. It's like the second time within the past month and a half. In New Jersey, the officials issued evacuation orders Wednesday night along the Passaic River. It's already reached major flood levels twice in the past month. Another historic high is expected Thursday afternoon. The river hasn't crested yet, so how high do you expect it to get? It, I expect it to get all the way up to here. All the way it, to it came all the way up here. The last time that it came up, and you can see water still coming in. Charles McDougall is staying behind in his Wayne home while his family evacuates. He says they are still cleaning up from unprecedented flooding last month. Back in December, when the flood hit, it went above that mailbox. Yes. How much damage did your house suffer? So maybe about ten, twenty thousand dollars. So you're just cleaning up from yes, that. Yes, I'm just. We're just getting through. Yesterday, we waded through knee-high water to reach Charles' home, but as you can see, that is no longer an option. It is a half mile behind me, and this water continues to rise. Residents in Democratic Republic of Congo use shovels to paddle their way through flooded streets, now clogged with discarded plastic bottles and other debris. The Congo River has risen to its highest level in more than 60 years and has caused flooding throughout Democratic Republic of Congo and neighboring Congo Republic. More than 300 people have died and 300,000 households have been affected over the past month, with tens of thousands of houses destroyed, authorities said. Climate activist Ketia Pasu. As an activist, I'm not very surprised to see that the water level is rising so much. What surprises me is the extent to which no measures are being taken for all those families who are just suffering the effects of climate change in the form of heavy flooding. Ferry Mowa, a hydrology specialist at the DRC Riverways Authority, said his office had flagged the high water level in late December, warning that almost the entire floodplain of the capital Kinshasa could be affected. On Wednesday, the river reached over 20 feet above sea level, just shy of the 1961 record, he told Reuters. Several neighborhoods in DRC's densely populated Kinshasa have flooded, as well as communities in more than a dozen provinces, the Social Affairs Ministry said. Kinshasa resident Juan Sinlukula says the government doesn't take responsibility for the situation. You get the impression that people are left to their own devices, building wherever they want, however they want. There's no urbanization. There's nothing being done. There are no gutters planned. And even if there are gutters, they are not maintained. DRC's Social and Humanitarian Affairs Minister, Modeste Mutinga, told Reuters that a meeting will be held on Thursday to evaluate further humanitarian aid. Jesus declares this in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus tells us in verse 37, when our days parallel the days of Noah, he is returning. 
One of the things that parallel our days with the days of Noah is the unprecedented flooding the world has been experiencing over the last few years. Jesus goes on to tell us in verses 38 and 39 that when he returns, things will be going on as normal as people will be eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Just as in the days of Noah, when people were caught off guard and the flood came, so also will people of our time be caught off guard when Jesus returns. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what? Appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.